Now, when you study the Greek word in James 4, 3, where he says, you receive not because you ask amiss. The Greek word there, amiss, is kakose. Kakose means you ask miserable. Kakose means you ask sick. You ask diseased. Who has understood it? So you ask and receive not because when you go to God, you go as one who is sick. Yet by his stripes you were healed. So you cannot receive your healing because you see yourself as a sick man. Not a man healed by the finished work of Christ at the cross of Calvary. So two people go to, to God with the same illness. And one goes to God like, God, you know, I love you. I help me. Because if you don't kill me, I will not raise my children. You see, some of you think eh, that you can trick God out of principle by, by, by becoming emotional. <laughs> God is not emotional. He is revelational. So this person goes, they say, I have diabetes. Help me, Lord. Heal me. If you heal me, I'll serve you. If God should heal such a man, he can only heal him because he's ignorant. Only. You know, the Bible says in the days of ignorance, God winked, but now he calleth all men to repent. You know what winking means? Winking means he realizes you, you don't know what you're asking for, but he says, anyway, they don't know, let me heal them. Don't make it a standard of prayer. Some people from that day make it a standard of prayer. So every time they're in trouble, they remember, I remember that I cried. Uh-uh. uh, -uh. <laughs> uh, -uh. Let me go and what? Cry. You're like those people, they put on funerals to cry. I saw one, he was crying. He was a good man. And they said, but the one who died is a girl. <laughs> Some of you are good mourners. Every time you're in the presence of God, and you think that by crying that way, God is going to move. And if you have noticed, you have cried for years for that man. But nothing is changing. You've cried for years for your son, but nothing is changing. You've cried for years for your marriage. Every time you're in the presence of God, why me? You see what I'm saying? Because at one particular point, Apostle Grace preached the truth and you didn't get it. God corrected you. Now you're not ignorant because you know, but you, you didn't understand. But again, you cannot judge heaven because heaven gave everything that you need. And so you keep in perpetual begging and begging and begging and begging and you don't see answers. And you start to think, I think the problem is my neighbor. I think it's my cousin. I think it's my uncle. I think it's the pastor. I think it's the times. It's the ages. It's my nose. No. Truth. When you know the truth, the truth shall make you free. Now, listen to this. So somebody is sick. God says by his stripes, ye were healed. Now, whether you feel pain or you're in whatever state, dire or not, whether you can speak with your mouth or you can't, the moment you go to God, deal with him on his terms. Don't go sick. Don't go sick. Now imagine a man who is sick and then they enter the presence of God and they say, Father, ho, 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 ho. Yeah! I am healthy as a man can be, glory to God. Mm, I feel healthy. Thank you because there is no diabetes in my body. I am laughing at the devil. <laughs> I cannot have high blood pressure. I just came to thank you. because No, no, no. I didn't come to beg. I didn't come to ask. I didn't come to plead. I know what you did by Christ on the cross. I'm just here to say, what would I do if I didn't have Jesus? To deal with this stuff already. But oh, I thank you, Father. Because you dealt with this by Christ.
by your stripes are has healed. My body is in order. My kidneys are working. My liver is working. My everything is working. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And then you even put on some praise song and then start to dance. Ay, 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 ay. That's oh. Who has understood what I'm saying? Because that man did not go in the presence of God diseased. I feel so sorry every time I, I'm talking to people, somebody comes for counseling and you tell them, oh, hi, how are you? And I say, ah, things are not good. That's the beginning of the line. And I'm thinking to myself, I wish I can take this person for a few hours and open the Bible and help them understand what they just said. They've come miserable. They already carry a miserable countenance and they're coming to God for an answer because they remember people in the Old Testament. Jesus' time was Old Testament also. New Testament began when Jesus was raised from the dead. So when you see, oh, Jesus of Nazareth, heal me. A man was screaming. Some of you think you copy those same lines. Jesus of Nazareth, <laughs> heal me. That, that, that was the Old Testament. The New Testament began when Jesus was raised from the dead. Are you following what I'm saying? New Testament believers don't cry out. But I've, I've been to churches where people are crying out. You are going to cry out to God today. Makode, tell somebody you're crying out to God. A man cried out to Jesus and said, Jesus of Nazareth. He even pronounces it wrong. Jesus of Na Na Nazareth. <laughs> oh, heal me. So today you are going to, you are going to scream until Jesus hears you. Shout hallelujah. We are going to scream for our rent. We are going to scream for our fees. We are going to scream for our marriages. We are going to scream for our healing. You are going to say to Jesus. <laughs> oh, Lord of mercy. And so the person's prayer begins in a miserable, diseased, indifferent attitude. And they start, Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, heal me. <laughs> You get it? You understand it? Well, there are people in the world who go in the presence of God. And they say, I am in your presence. Glory to God. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Woo. I feel your presence. I feel your glory already. Your power is around me. It saturates my being. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I feel the anointing. The same spirit that raised you from the dead is now resident in the inside of me. It gives life to all my beings from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. Ay, 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 ay. Woo! I feel it. 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 Glory to God. And then you start worshiping God. You, you get one of those summons that, eh? If you do nothing else for me, you have done it all. I, 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 I'm sorry. But you, what has God done for you? Oh, oh, you missed the point. God doesn't need to do anything for me, but He needs me to go that way. He needs me to go that way because it's the only way I can understand what he has truly done. I don't need to see the manifestation. You see how many of you go sick? Huh? Somebody goes to service and they were fired from their job. And then they fall in a corner like somewhere there. There's somebody who was fired. I see them just next to that palm tree there. And then as they start worshipping, Why? Why me? <laughs> For you, you're next to the person you're worshipping, you think they're being filled. <laughs> but it's a miserable spirit over them. Are you following what I'm saying? 
You see how people come in the presence? Just imagine, parents, parents, you know what I'm talking about. Imagine you're in the living room somewhere doing something, and then your child comes. <laughs> Sorry, what's wrong? Why? Because they're not making sense revolutionally. <laughs> By revelation, they are not. So spiritually, they're like, Oh, sorry, sorry. Keep quiet. Okay. Have some candy. And then they go back. Every day. I say, but why? What's wrong with you? Keep quiet. And in a few minutes, they're singing. Jesus. I say, my child is singing. <laughs> say, but why is this child always crying? What's wrong? What's wrong with you? You understand what I'm saying? That's how many of you are in the presence. But imagine every time your child comes and says, Mommy! <laughs> you understand? Every time they come in your presence, they're exuberant. They're happy. You see what I'm saying? I say some of you parents have taken children to hospitals and said, no, there's nothing wrong. But she was crying, but there's nothing wrong. You're connecting? You thought about the child is suffering from what? Nothing. The child is 100% healthy. But they just, that was the day they just chose to what? Hey, to create trouble. Now, God has said, you ask miserable. That means if, if, if you have been fired, you're the kind who was fired, first cry, then after crying, Clean your eyes. Put on makeup. Reconstruct yourself through someone. Put on scripture, then pray. <laughs> One time somebody called me and they got a very bad report. I told them, first go and sleep. But I told them, first go and first get some sleep. Then we shall talk when you have rested your mind. Because I knew if I get them when they're at that point, they're going to... Boo, 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 boo. You see what I'm saying? God, God says, do not come sick because I healed all your diseases. I don't care where they fired you and how they've taken your house. It's under receivership or whatever business of your views have gone and your assets are out. Come happy. As one who knew that the vote of your wealth is not based on what you have at that particular point or what you have lost. But it's entirely determined by what God did through Christ. For we know of our Lord Jesus Christ, the grace of our Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. Though he was rich, yet for your sex, the Bible says he became poor. That you through his poverty might what? Be rich. Now, that's a true statement whether they fired you last week or not. That is true whether you have rent or not. That is true whether you have a property in this world or not. That is true whether you have clothes or not. That is true whether you slept hungry last night or not. And God is not going to change it and adjust to your indifference and ignorance because you think that it's going to be melted on your tears. No, he said, don't come to me. The Bible says, come to the throne of God with boldness. Is that what Hebrew says? He says, let us therefore come. Give me the amplified version of that. Amplified. He says, one, two, three, let's go. Let us then fearlessly and confidently and boldly draw near to the throne of grace the throne of God's unmerited favor to us, that we may receive mercy for our failures and find grace to help in good time for every sum, for every sum, for every sum, for every need, appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when we need it. <laughs> Glory to God! Somebody shout amen. amen. So you don't go to God timid and fearful and weak and miserable and sick, no. He said, come boldly. I'm going to pray for a sick man because I know a sick man is going to be healed. You understand the attitude? I'm going to pray for my marriage because this is the way I'm supposed to get married. Oh, yes, please, yes. The word of God. 
I have somebody in this ministry, they were proposed to and the man told them, I'm going to marry you in two weeks. What are you talking about? 